All right, man, let's let's get rolling here. So everybody, uh, this I've got Andrew on from, he's a founder of a company called Lead Hype. And they, I guess, manage cold email marketing for for big customers, correct, Andrew? Yeah, we, we run lots of uh, cold email campaigns, you know, hundreds of active campaigns. Okay. So the reason why I wanted to have Andrew on here for you guys, because I'm always, you know, trying to come up with, with different marketing methods. And there's, you know, because as you guys know, there's a lot of people that do the same thing. You know, we, you, you, a lot of people in, in our industry make cold calls all the time, right? So everybody's pulling lists from the same platform, doing the same thing. So people are pulling from PropStream or they're pulling from Deal Machine or, you know, whatever system you're using. And you're pulling the same kind of distressed property lists and, you know, in, in Detroit or Dallas or St. Louis or wherever you're at and, and you're doing the same thing as everybody else. Right. And, and so people, a lot of times will get frustrated because they keep getting phone calls from the same people using the same list and all that. So I'm trying to come up with different methods for you guys to market people. That's maybe less effort, but better results. Right. And I'm a big uh, email marketer and i wanted to bring andrew on and talk about cold email marketing and i want to kind of with him walk through the process of setting up a system like this so you can just email you, you know you can get a list put it in an email marketing system and just email people kind of on autopilot and and have that get leads for you so um starting with you know with Andrew, with, you know, people being able to uh, pull a list. And I mentioned some some systems like Deal Machine, which includes email addresses and their data now. But there's others in the, in the you know, in our marketplace, PropStream and, you know, and a lot of other ones. But once somebody gets a big email list of, you know, property owners and their email addresses, let's talk about like how they would set up a system like this, you know, where they could take those emails, put them into something and just let it run for them. Mm -hmm. Just to give a disclaimer, you know, uh, you make sure you're following, you know, the can't spam act and, and everything like that, you know, in the, in the cold email industry, but, um, you know, cold email is pretty much the same, you know, it doesn't matter who the target audience is. It, it comes down to, you know, three pieces, the email list, the email copy, you know, the, me the actual message that you're sending out to the people and the sending of the emails. So list copy sending, that's that's like my, you know, mantra, list copy sending, list copy sending. So the sending portion has always been the same for the past, you know, a uh, very long time. And what people are doing is they're taking paid email accounts like Google Workspace emails, like G Suite emails, mm -hmm. and they're sending a low volume of emails from each google workspace email account that they have and the large people to scale what they do is they buy multiple email accounts and then each email account that they have sends a little volume from each but you know um you add them all together and it's a large volume campaign right so, so let's it's, it's, let's, it's, let's it talk about like, that let's let's talk about that for just a minute with the emails so what andrew's saying is you you can't use like gmail or Yahoo or Outlook, like your regular generic emails. You have to actually to do a cold email campaign. You have to buy a like a dot com or a dot net or or some domain and then create emails for that. So like a like a David at wholesalingpartners.com or or something like that, correct? Yeah. Well, some just to just to clarify, you can use gmail accounts it's a strategy okay. where people buy aged ones it's just not um the strategy that we recommend personally okay okay so you can do it if it's age but probably not best to do it from your from your everyday account no never whatever right. you do <clears throat> no matter what you do um don't do that because that's uh that's how your your real emails will start going to spam okay so. all right all right so so continue now so so somebody gets gets some accounts you know through gmail or you know sets up account and those are typically 
I'm, you know, I've got a million of them and I don't look at it all the time, but I think you can get a domain email for around six bucks a month, something like that. Six, yeah, eight basically. Bucks a month. Yeah. Okay. And, and you set those yeah. up. Yeah. So then, so then after you get the domain and, and people overcomplicate the domain, they, they say, well, you know, what domain should I use? It has to be, and they spend so much time on it. Uh, some of the domains that we own are like our marketing email dot net. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's the most generic email that you could imagine. So don't overthink that part. Um, and, you know, we, we use prefixes like try, get a test, you know, and then the company name and then like a suffix like afterwards, like now best or just random stuff. And that's how we get, you know, thousands of uh, keywords and stuff like that. Thousands of domains. Right. They're available. So then we buy these domains, we put an email on them, and then we use a tool um, called SmartLead. And SmartLead.ai is the platform that controls the email accounts that you just like purchase. So imagine that you have 100 of these email accounts logging into them and sending one email from each of the 100 email accounts is you know <laughs> insane. So that's why there's platforms out there nowadays that allow you to attach the email account to the platform and then the platform manages it for you right it schedule sends the emails you could upload 100 email accounts to one campaign and it rotates the emails you know throughout the day the different sender accounts and that's how you send you know volume is using platforms like that so you upload the email list into the tool um the tool sends emails on your behalf from the email accounts that you attach to it Right. So that's now, that's kind of the, the purpose of that platform. Now you talk about um, like how many how many emails you can send f uh, from a email address a day, and can you throttle that up after time? Uh, so you know what what so if somebody wanted to send a hundred emails a day to homeowners and say, hey, are you interested in selling your property? What uh, how many email addresses would they need? And, and can they over time send more from those email addresses? Yeah. So, so what, so that, what you just asked, that information changes like every three to six months. So I just want to put that out there okay. uh, right now. What we're doing is we're sending up to 50 cold emails per day per email account. So if you want to send a hundred emails per day, you need two email accounts. Okay. So each email account is 50 a day, which is a thousand a month. 20, 20 business days per okay. month. So, you know, 50 per day, a thousand a month. If you want to send a hundred a day, you would need two email accounts, which is 2000 cents a month. If you want a hundred thousand cents a month, people usually think about it on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for a thousand cents a month, it's one account. For 10,000 cents a month, it's 10 accounts. For a hundred thousand cents, it's a hundred accounts. For a million cents, it's a thousand accounts. Right. And then with, with smart lead, they have packages where, you know, for, I believe it, it's, it's what 30 to 40 bucks a month. You can send like 6,000 emails right out of your system. Unlimited. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know the exact uh, packages yeah. off my head, but yeah, they have a, you know, $30 plan, a hundred dollar plan. Right. Okay. You know, so right. what, what do you guys, okay. So, so you set up the domains and and you you integrate with with uh, Smart Lead. Mm -hmm. Is that a pretty easy process once you have the domains plugging them into Smart Lead? Um, once you have emails configured, then yeah, it's it's a one click. You know, it's like a one click uh, login, like connection. where you're authorizing it. Yeah, like yeah, okay, okay. So that's pretty easy. So it's just. If anybody has ever set up a domain, that's not setting up a domain email domain. That's going to be the more complicated part, right? Getting the domain, you know, getting the G Suite or whatever you're going to do to set that up and you know, all the DNS records, DNS records, and all that stuff. So, but that's the that's the hard part, and that's what you know, I want to point out. That's what Andrew's one of the things Andrew's company does. But the you know, and from our previous conversation, Andrew, you really only do that for 
uh, you're really looking for bigger clients when you're doing that, right? You don't want to set up one email account. You're looking that somebody that's going to run campaigns that are spending, I think gave me a number like $500 a month, right? And yeah, in, yeah, we have, we have a whole bunch of different services. Um, I can explain those at the end, I guess, after explaining, uh, how everything works. Okay. All right. All right. Continue yeah. then. So I'm yeah, just so, going, so you know more. So you do. Yeah, you so go with so I, I guess, I guess what I'm kind of doing right now is I'm bringing us through an A to Z process. Okay. You know, right. we, we purchased domains, we, you know, configured email accounts. And then the next step is to use a tool like, um, smart lead, you attach it to smart lead. And then the next step of the process after you attach it to smart lead is to set up what's known as a, a warm up feature. So in cold email, you know, uh, if you're, if you are familiar with cold email, you're familiar with warm up and warm up is you can't just go out on day. You can't just buy a domain, connect an email and then send 50 emails a day or a thousand emails a month from day one. What you have to do is you have to warm up the email account and there's platforms now that do that for you. So what you do is you attach your email account. And then it automatically takes that email and has a conversation with another user. And another user could be me and David, right? I could have an email and David could have an email. And we just email each other back and forth with the you know dozens of email accounts that we have. So we email each other back and forth. Uh, I might send him an email, then he replies, and then he emails me, and then I reply to him. And that happens automatically. And what you do is there's settings for that. So on day one, you'll send two emails automatically. And then on day two, you'll send four. On day three, you'll send six. So you ramp up by two until you're sending 30 a day automatically. So you're sending 30 emails a day. You're getting, you know, uh, 10 replies a day. And you leave that running for, uh, for, uh, for three weeks from the day that you connect it and set it up. So right. you buy the domain, you buy the email, you connect it, you configure warming. And then you let it run automatically for three weeks. All and right. that's the warm-up time. Explain what explain why warming is important. If you don't, your emails will just not land in inbox. You're just sending emails. You'll see that you sent emails, but no one's reading it. So you can't right. sell anything. But it doesn't it show it shows the email service providers like like Google or Gmail that when people are engaging with it, 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 it lands them in the inbox because it looks more personal, more conversational versus the, just. Yeah, yeah, the, exactly. The purpose of warm up is to, um, uh, I don't know a good, uh, term. Yeah. Age the account, make it look, uh, you know, create activity in right. the account, you right. know, uh, with the purpose of landing in the inbox. So okay. when you do start the cold email campaign, your emails land in inbox rather than spam. Gotcha. All right. All right. So so continue. Okay. So after you after you get the start that warm up process mm -hmm. and you get them warmed up, then where do you go with it? Yeah. So after after everything's warmed for three weeks, then you turn on the cold e the actual real cold email campaign, and that that takes. Um, you just flip, you basically flip the switch. That's how I think of it in my head. And you start sending real cold emails and you're also sending warm up emails at the same time to keep the, uh, the email looking uh, real as possible. Okay. So, um, so then you're sending the 50 cold emails a day. And then the next thing to do is wait and collect data, see how it does. Okay. So you're, so, we would well, of course, of course, you have to configure the campaign and everything like that. <laughs> right. So that's what yeah. I was just going to say. So yeah, so, so, yeah sorry if I'm uh, leaving that part out. Oh, that's okay. So you you would craft. So if we're doing a hundred a day, or you know, or five hundred emails a day, and we've got the the email stacked up for, it, we would craft how many different emails would you craft to go out to the recipients? So what you're talking about is split tests. So what we what we do in our company, um, all right. So say that your emails are warming, right? The next part of that process is now you have to craft your message and upload your list and everything like that. Right. So um, when you're crafting the message, you know your audience is targeting. You know, uh, you know, uh, they're trying to purchase properties. Um, 
what you could do or would want to do would be to write, you know, multiple versions of your message. Like every time you think that you have a good message, sometimes it's not good. You know, sometimes what you think works doesn't work and it fails miserably. I so, feel like um, that often with my emails. <laughs> yeah. And, and you just have to, you just have to, you know, pivot, you know, accept it, you know, Hey, it's not working. Uh, pivot and, and but the software makes it very easy. You just could toggle it on or off. So if one if one version doesn't do good, you just toggle it off and it will stop sending that version of it. And every so, version that you load up, you can see the analytics on that and correct. what's what, how it's performing exactly. and all that. Would mm -hmm. you how many if you were say you wanted to hit a thousand uh send out a thousand uh, uh, emails a month, how many different variations of your message would you be sending at once uh it, that's a low number um all right say say ten thousand. yeah don't don't mind me uh adjusting the shades real quick oh that's okay i got a little bit of sun on my face i might go dark here but um yeah basically um you you're, you're gonna want to send say between 500 and 2000 emails okay to test to see if the the content is doing good or not. Okay. But would you have would you have 20 emails loaded up in there? 20 test emails? Oh, or, uh normally normally, you know, 3 to 10. Okay, 3 3 to yeah, 3, three to, to 10. Three to 5, 3 to 5 typically if you're doing extreme stuff up to 10. Okay. And then you're and then this every month uh, after a 30 day period or whatever, you're just removing the, the, the poorest performing and adding a new one. Correct. You just hit it with a toggle switch and turn, turn off the poor performing ones okay. after, you know, it, it's not really based on time. It's based on the quantity of sends. Like if okay. you're only sending from one account, um, you're, you're, it might take you an entire month to get the data that you need. If you're sending from a, a thousand accounts, you'll have that data in a day. <laughs> right. Now, your business, you do this, the, the customers that you have, you do it mostly for people trying to set appointments for for services or or what's your what's your biggest client, you know, your your biggest usage that you're doing? Yeah, so cold, cold email is for the purpose of it's used best, in my opinion, uh, when sending out emails to business owners to get them on a call with you for you to pitch them your service or product as long as they find the product or service interesting. Right. That's typically what cold email is used for. Um, that being said, I know that there's, you know, property managers uh, that use cold email to target absentee owners um, to get them to rent their, their property as a vacation rental. Right. So you know, I know that's that's also very popular in our in the, the cold email industry. Right. So 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 our and, and and I understand Andrew is not like I explained to him what wholesalers do, but you know this is kind of new to him. But but real estate wholesalers. So we're looking for we would email to a similar list of not absentee owners, but absentee owners that that are or homeowners that had a vacant property or a property that was tax delinquent or something that's going to make it to where, you know, they're in a situation where they probably want to sell it or they, they would be more likely to want to sell it. Mm -hmm. So with that said, you know, when we, when we get a deal, the, you know, that's, it usually means anywhere from a, you know, could be a 10 to a $50,000, you know, uh, contract for us. So there's a good, you know, there's good money in it, you know, probably a lot more than like a property manager that would rent an Airbnb. So I think it's advantageous for people to look at this to, to generate leads because they are valuable coming in. So, um, so once you, once you get it up and running, I mean, like really other than loading, just continually loading new leads in there or new email addresses and new names, um, what kind of management is there? You check and check and see what's, what's converting and adding new, new email addresses. It, it gets as easier, as complicated as you want to. Okay. Um, if you have enough data to last you for a year, you could literally upload, you know, create one campaign, upload all the, 
year worth of data. Uh, you know, keep your email split tests. You know, you just keep the email there running and turn it on or off. Um, or you could, you know, make it as complicated as you want. You could, you know, if you're getting a web form submissions, you know, you could use uh, these types of email platforms to send, uh, you know, uh, autoresponder emails type of emails. Um, but at the same time, there's there's typical stuff that breaks. Email accounts always break. Email account, like the actual domain that you purchase to send cold email is going to get blacklisted and start landing in spam. So what happens is that one email, say that you have 100, you might have 10 that are hitting a 10% open rate, which typically indicates they're in spam. So now you need to delete or discard those domains, buy 10 new domains, add those to warm up for three weeks, and then start over with those 10 before adding them to the pool of sender accounts. And that's right. known as, you know, domain health. Correct. Do you so get now that, talking that about talking about domain health? I mean, you pro, I would imagine you just judge it from from um, from those statistics. I mean, do you guys use anything like uh, Google Postmaster or anything like that to watch IP health or anything like that? Or you so just... we don't we don't use um, uh, Postmaster or Postman or whatever it's called. Um, what we do is we use uh, just indicators, and and, and it's it's depending on how crazy the situation is. Um, but typically check for a black, if you're on a blacklist, uh, the domains in the blacklist, you could check, you know, make sure everything DNS is configured properly. Um, open rate is op open rate is my first indicator. And then I check the warm up statistics to see if it's landing in spam. And then after that, I check, you know, for blacklists. Where do you um, check for that at Andrew? Is there a website you can check? Yeah, for blacklist, you go to mxtoolbox.com um, and you just type in your domain and it'll tell you if, if it's blacklisted. Okay. Yeah. That's good advice. So so really, <clears throat> that's going to be the main thing that you're going to watch for after you get uh, this set up for and me, running? For me, it's, it's, it's open rates, yeah. Right. And, and on a per email basis. So you'll see that You'll have some open rates in the 40s and 50s, and then some in the 10s and 20s. And typically, we just you know throw those out. But you know, there's really crazy spam situations that pop up. Um, once we had a guy who's sending like a million emails a year, and his phone number ended up getting us blacklisted. So um, in the email, the in the uh, yeah. So in the email, in his email signature, he had a phone number, and it was used so much that it was actually caused us to be blacklisted on new domains and emails right. that were properly warmed up. So um, it's just some hardcore diagnostic stuff that we have to do sometimes. So, so that were interesting. You say that. So would it be better when you're sending out emails to, to maybe keep, keep that kind of thing out of it and just say, Hey, you know, if you're interested in, in, you know, in selling this property or you want to talk reply, you know, no. like, you know? No, no, because people confuse and start to believe that the goal of cold emailing is to land in the inbox. But the goal of cold emailing is to make money. Right. So if you might get double or triple the amount of leads if you add the phone number, but your okay. email might might go to spam in one month instead of four months. Okay. But you you during that one month of usage, you got four times the amount of leads. Sure. Sure. So that the only thing that matters is ROI. I didn't know if the you know if the back and forth would help your your domain authority, but but I, I completely agree with what you're saying. I mean, like the end result is to is to get leads. Do you see a phone number working better than saying, you know, I would assume it works better than saying, Hey, here's my, here's my website. You know, if you've got a property to sell, go fill out my form. I would assume a, a phone number would work better. Um, the call to action, what you're doing with the, the traffic, um, never, I, I never push them to a website. Um, it's for them to do that amount of effort and work just doesn't make sense. Uh, the data that you have, if they reply, you should have their address already. So you shouldn't yeah. need to get them to, you know, fill out a form. Right. Um, I mean, and so, yeah, I never, I never get them to fill out a form. Number one, uh, number two, the best thing or 
then the next thing to do is the options that you have is to get them to reply. So it's like, you know, like you said, reply if you're interested, or you could say, you know, are would you consider selling for the right pl- price? Question mark. Like that could be the end of the quote email message. Um, a phone number, you know, is another call to action. But what I'm going to tell you is that the target audience ha- ha- requires different call to actions. Like you might have someone in one market that has a better call to action than a different market. You know what I mean? Like you might be targeting people that are blue collar versus white collar and, and the, the white collar people uh, uh, might be comfortable replying versus the blue collar people just want to call you. You know, like it's it's really and that's just a you know scenario I made up, but and based on your copy, I don't know. There's so many factors that the best thing to do is to test it. Just test, 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 yeah. test, yeah. Test this test. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, any other, I mean, like any other suggestions if somebody wants to try doing this? I mean, like you we, you've covered, I think you've covered the basics really well, but what else uh, anything else you would add to that? um list copy sending um so if we're talking about copy uh it's it's just changing the message and changing the you're 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 creating something that's a cookie cutter and you just want to change one thing on every split test right because you want to have variables so if the data source is coming from two different data sources you might want to run the same five split test like five copy split tests to both data separately right. so you have different split tests for this data different split tests for this data you know there's just a, a lot of it's all testing okay do you recommend before you put emails into uh, into smart lead to clean the list you have to yeah, yeah. we, we okay. use a platform called a million verifier and what it does is it basically this is how I think about it. I don't even know if this is tech, the technically how it works. You put a, uh, the email list in, you upload it, and then they send a test email to see if the email is real or not. Yeah. And then you only use the deliverable emails. I use, um, I use, uh, typically have used never bounce. What do you think about them? Um, Good, bad? It, it, zero. So we, there's really two categories for us. It's um, best value and, and best quality. The best value for us is million verifier. The best quality is zero bounce. Zero bounce? Yeah. Check them out. All right. Do you, now I know you, again, you you have a lot of different different clients, but do you find like with something like this where you're emailing a homeowner and not a business owner, would you think personal would a well, personal crafted email is going to uh, respond better than, than a, you know, more of a professional or again, do you think, you know, just based on their demographic and, and, you know, their, you know, their background and that kind of the, the geographic area and stuff, or do you see that something that's crafted more personal, uh has a better response rate uh it's very hard to personalize it you know it's like hey you know david i i love your you know white window trim around your house <laughs> you know like, like i I, you know, I know i don't mean in that way i mean you know like where you're making making yourself come across more more personal you know not like like you know there would be a difference between a corporate letter hello i'm with you know abc corporation blah 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 versus hey i'm a local uh, real estate you know investor and i drove by your house and i noticed it was vacant blah blah, blah you know that kind of difference it will, t- it will typically a, a three to six sentence uh copy is what works best in cold email it's like okay. the opposite of a newsletter right um if you're talking about corporate versus like a uh, free spirited yes um that's something you'd have to you'd have to split test the split test and i yeah, yeah but i agree with what you just said if you get the shorter an email the better the response in my experience right mm-hmm. if you get wordy and you you know you try to tell them everything about you there's no reason to respond 
right? Mm-hmm. Because they're like, okay, I know everything about them now. But if you're if you're shorter in your email, make good copy, but keep it short. I, to me, I see better response rates on on shorter emails. And, and what I tell people is, if if they don't believe me, I just say, you know, that's fine. You know, we'll, you know, you could write a long email. We'll add it to the split test and see how it does. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we'll, we'll sure. <laughs> sure, we'll throw it in. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would assume, okay, so let's look at what I want to talk about your, you know, your individual clients, but as a, you know, a marketing method, when you see clients come on, I mean, overall, are they sticking with cold email because it's working for them? I mean, I would assume that if you get it dialed in, right, it would, it would, it would be beneficial and you would, it would be something that you would hang with. So this is my opinion. So it has nothing to do if it's cold email or Facebook ads or Google ads or SEO. If your people are running or paying for SEO and it's generating the money, they're going to keep paying for it. You know, um, what I would tell you is that, of course, if people, if it makes them money, they keep paying. Do most of our clients stay long term? Yes. Lots of our clients do. Um you know, I have clients that have been around for years and send me referrals, you know, four years later and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you, if you make it work and, and typically, uh, I guess a better question is, you know, what makes campaigns work versus not work. And I mm-hmm. think a lot of it is people put minimal effort in and expect it to just work. And for those people, it doesn't work and they blame cold email or they blame me or they blame anything but themselves. Right. That's in <laughs> anything, right? It's, yeah. you know, it's the same with coaching, right? If, if, if the person doesn't act, it's always the coach's fault, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You can get out and do it, but it's, yeah, I'll blame it on the coach. So when you say that, when you say, you know, it depends on how much effort they put into it. What do you, in cold email marketing, what do you mean by that? The, is how much they monitor their open rates? How much they no, change, no, no. testing their uh, copy? Testing, or, testing, testing copy and less testing copy. data source. Different data sources. Okay, good advice. Testing different, copy. different list types. I'm making notes like, why we do this, yeah. guys, so I can share it. And like like you guys, you guys in the real estate, you might have, you know, sheriff sales list. Uh, yes. Uh, absentee owners or tired landlords or uh, anything motivated. Yeah. Any motivated seller. We list. have in the real estate business, we have no shortage of data. Yeah. Because, yeah. because everybody's selling it. Right. So it's just finding the right list with the, the right message, I think. Is well, it's, it's a supply and demand. Do, right. do people, are the people that you're reaching out to, do they care about you wanting to buy, I guess, are right. they interested in selling? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's always the key, right? So does anybody a, on here have it's any a, It's the same thing for, if, if you're cold, Andrew? if you're cold calling too, you know, it's the same thing yeah. for cold calling the same list. Yeah. You know, the thing is, you know, some people and why I like cold email, I want, I think it's less intrusive. Right. It's because people cold calling aggravates a lot of people. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, in this business, people are on the same list or getting called by a bunch of different people. And it's and it can be frustrating. And, and nobody likes to be called now. You know, and they went down the same path with, you know, SMS text messaging and everybody was getting a list, you know, skip tracing, getting the phone numbers and just, you know, they would blast out, you know, 50,000 e- uh, text mm-hmm. messages a day. Right. I prefer email. I think if you've got a good email list, it's going to provide good results. Like you said, if you've got good copy, right? Mm-hmm. And and so that's why I, you know, I wanted to to get some people on here that were interested in this, and and we're going to, you know, beta test it and try some different copy and and see what works, you know. And I want to see who else wanted to get involved in it. So, and I guess I could pick off where pick up where I left off. Um, so now say that you do spend time and you get your copy, right? Um, you only have a certain amount of list in your area. So there, there, you're going to run into two things. The, the copy just stops working. They actually call it copy fatigue in the, the copywriting world. It just will stop working, whether the, the, the sun and stars, the alignment shifted and for whatever reason, it just stops working. So, um, you'll have 
copy that works and then it just stops working for whatever reason you you write new copy and that performs better that's one thing mm -hmm. the second thing is say that you only have a couple thousand people in your market or your your audience um what we what we've done is we've retargeted these people every three months like like whenever i i have a small list i retarget them every three months with new copy that i think of three months later i don't i don't pre-write you know a, a year's worth of copy uh, what I do is I run a campaign. I see what worked good, what didn't work good, and then based on that, I think about it for three months, and then you know write it uh, later. Right. You know the new copy later. Yeah. What I was thinking, you know, it, when I was brainstorming this, because you know, like like here in Tampa, you know, we have you know we'd have plenty of data in Tampa, plenty in Saint Petersburg or Pinellas County. Sarasota, Bradington. I mean, you've got like all these different areas, Orlando or, or whatever, and you could really rotate through the cities, right? And make copy specific for Tampa, right? Um, and have a headline, you know, and again, change your copy and test things, but have a headline or a subject line that just said, um, you know, your your Tampa property or I drove by your Tampa house or, or something like that. And then just have, like you said, six, you know, five or six lines. Just, hey, I, you know, I'm a local investor. I drove by your property in Tampa. It looked to be vacant. I was just curious if, you know, if you were interested in selling or would, you know, would like a cash offer on the property or whatever, you know, and change your copy. But then you could, you know, after you ran your list of, the, you know, that you had in Tampa, then you could hop over in, you know, St. Petersburg and Pinellas and do the same thing and then hop over to Orlando and do the same thing. So you don't get that list fatigue. So you're, you know, you're moving around and doing it. Got you. Yeah. So I don't, uh, I was anybody popping in with any questions. So, um, Oh, here's Tyrone. What if the person's on the do not call list? Can you send them an email? No, I'm not an attorney. So I'm going to tell you. <laughs> We're not going to answer that. Not an attorney. With email, with email marketing, your, your uh, can spam uh, rules, they need to opt into a list, right? Is that how it works with email? Or do you not want to answer those questions? Say, 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 ask that question with the, with the Can Spam Act. Do they need to opt into a list to email them? If that was the case, then then you, it would be uh there'd be no such thing as cold email. Okay, all right. Yeah, so there's your answer, Tyrone. Is there? There's not a there. As far as I know, Tyrone, there is not a do not email list. There's a. There's always a. Uh, uh, you know, a, a button on your email that says, take me off your list. I just, I don't know if, I don't know if people can see this, but I yeah, just added yeah, a they see it. yeah, it's there. Yeah. So that's, that's the uh, FTC uh, guideline. Basically what they're saying is uh, they have 10 requirements. Uh, don't use uh, misleading, you know, header information. Don't use sub deceptive subject lines. Uh, identify the message as an ad. Uh, tell recipients where you know an address uh tell them how to opt out you know moving right. forward um you know honor opt out requests you have like 10 days business 10 business days uh you know that and that's it and that's a unsolicited email yeah. so read read through that andrew um or i'm sorry andrew uh through it tyrone and um you know, if you're using, and I'm sure they have it uh, on um, on uh, Smart Lead, but there's an opt out link on your emails, right? Somebody doesn't want to get your email, they can they can opt out of it instantly. So same on you know on my email with ConvertKit or whatever. So yeah, yeah. The, I, there's no such thing as a that I that I'm aware of of a, uh, I've never scrubbed against a, a do not call list on an email. A do but, not. But you're yeah. supposed to. What you're supposed to do though is keep a. Um, a list of everyone that requested to opt out and you have to honor that, you know, if they unsubscribe to not reach out to them. So it's like a individualized, you know, they opted out to you. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. So keep that in mind, guys, read, read, print those rules off and have it if you're going to do that. So, all right. Any other questions guys for, uh, for Andrew? been very informative, man. I appreciate you coming on and doing this.
Yeah, sure. Do you want to talk about your company and what kind of clients you look for? Um, yeah, sure. I guess uh, my name is Andrew. I own a, a marketing agency called Lead Hype. Um, we specialize in in cold outreach. Uh, we do, you know, we have three main services. We have the first service is account setup. Um, if you just want us to, you know, purchase domains on your behalf, set up DNS and configure them to warming, you know, we charge thirty three dollars an email um, to configure that for you. Then we do like what we call managed sending, where we handle all that stuff for you and charge you a flat rate every month. You know, starting at four ninety seven a month, we we send up to twenty thousand emails a month for you. Um, you know, and and whatnot. Then we do done for you services for business owners that just want us to handle it for them. So those those are the main three services that we provide. Um, our company sends like ten million e cold emails a month. We have fifteen full time employees. Uh, all we do is cold email. We don't do anything else. Our agency. So. Yeah, and you and yeah, and you've been at it a while. Yeah, I started cold emailing a a decade ago, targeting uh, people on bigger pockets. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I yeah. think probably most everybody here is familiar with bigger pockets, if yeah. not on bigger pockets themselves, right? People put their um, uh, email address in the signature. So I hired a, a developer like a decade ago or over a decade ago to um, scrape the emails so I could sell them uh, hard money loans. Yeah. Do you still have that guy? I could use some scrape. A decade ago? No, no. <laughs> I have, I, have, I, have, I have a business partner now that, that does that type of stuff. <laughs> so, all right, man. Well, I don't see any other questions popping in there. So yeah. I want, you know, I want to thank you for coming on, explaining this uh, to us. I will link, you know, mm -hmm. to your website um, for anybody that wants, you know, where, is interested in your services and they can reach out to you on that. But, but thank you for doing this. Yeah, of course. I'm Andrew. Once again, Andrew from Lead Hype, uh, Facebook group, Quote Email Closers. Uh, you could reach me on Facebook. Just reach out, uh, find my profile, the owner of the group, whatnot. So thank you I guys. When I, when I put this on YouTube and every place, I'll have all your, all your information cool. on there. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank all you right. guys. Take thank care. Thank you. Thank you, man. Bye. Take care. Bye.